All right. Now recall that the question was, you are given a dice and you are allowed to roll it to see the result as many times as you want. You are asked to determine if the dice you have is a fair dice or it's a biased dice which rolls 6 with probability 1 over 3. What would you do? So you, are, you have a fair dice and for this fair dice, probability of rolling 6 is just 1 over 6, right? But for the uh, biased dice, this rolls uh, with probability higher than the regular one for rolling 6. So you are asked to roll, uh, you are asked to distinguish these two. So you are given a dice and you have to now this, uh, decide which one it is. So idea is to follow. Uh, you can just roll n times. So the expected value for the fair dice becomes, okay, so e x let's say expected value of the binomial distribution becomes n times 1 over 6 and it is this and for the uh, bias dice this is n over 3 right so uh, if you choose n small then it is hard for you to distinguish because these expected values will be close to each other so as i explained before if you choose n really high then the expected values will be very different than to each other. The gap will be really high. And uh, since the standard deviations will be very small compared to the gap between the expected values, you can easily distinguish which one is the correct one. But now uh, choosing it very high is not a good idea because you don't have the time and that you will be probably doing unnecessary work. So question is, what should be the end? And actually, when I choose an N, how can I make uh, the correct choice, right? So for this reason, let's recall the binomial distribution. Recall that actually binomial distribution is N Bernoulli trials. And if P is the probability of uh, obtaining successes, in other words, observing the, the distinguisher, then the probability of observing uh, M uh, successes uh, observing the distinguisher m many times is actually uh, you see p to the m times q to the m minus m right this is uh, what we said for the pro uh, number of times uh, if you roll m many times this will be the uh, probability for uh, observing m many successes so in other words if you plot this so this is number of rows so this is the number of successes and this is the probability so <laughs> probability right let me see i can erase this here Okay, so let's plot probability and success graph. So you can actually have zero successes, right? If you choose m equals to zero, n of m zero is one, p to the zero is one. So you end up with q to the n. So it is a very small number right here. Observing one success, now you have n to the n of one and p increases and so on so this would be a graph something like this okay and this peak value is just would correspond to n times p okay so what happens for the uh, fair dice is as follows the probability now the same thing n of m but this times p0 m times q0 m minus m. If I plot the same graph uh, using the same coordinates, this graph will be something like this. Okay, again, the peak value is n times 
P0. Since P0 is larger than P in differential cryptanalysis, this graph is here. So this is actually probability versus number of successes. So this is why you can see that I can uh, distinguish this like here. If I uh, draw a line here. And if you perform the experiment, so roll the dice m many times, and if you observe a value, for instance, here, let's say here, you just look at the probability of observing it, okay? For the uh, fair dice, sorry, for the biased dice, the probability is this, but for the uh, fair dice, it is this. So it is highly likely to it to be uh, bias dice instead of the fair dice, right? So if you roll uh, n many times and if you observe a value here, as you can see, it is highly likely that it is a fair dice and not a uh, bias dice, okay? Actually, if you plot the graph uh, better, the uh, differences would be a lot easier. So you can say that this is my threshold, okay? So I, if when I perform the experiment, if the result is higher than this value, I will say that it is biased dice. If it is less than this, I will say that it is a uh, fair dice. So now the question is, what would be your uh, success probability? Because you might make a mistake. For instance, you might be very unlucky. The given dice might be a biased dice, but you, your experiment might be a very low value. So what is this? Uh, what is the probability of this happening? So in this case, you will say that non-detection. So a probability of non-detection, which means that the dice is not fair, but you say that it is fair. So the probability of this event, actually summation of all of these dots, the probabilities. So this is your uh, non-detection probability. This is actually the, this probability is where m is less than or equal to t, which is the threshold. But same thing might happen for the other case around. So uh, you might be very lucky and when you, the dice might be fair. But when you perform the experiment, you might observe a very huge uh, number of uh, sixes. And you might say that, but this is uh, probably bias but it is not so what is the probability of this happening so again it is the summation of these probabilities okay and that is false alarm probability because uh, the dice is fair but you say that it is biased this is why we call it uh, false alarm probability so this probability is actually uh, summation of these values for every m where m is larger than equal to t until m equals to n. So these two things actually determine uh, your success probability. If these probabilities are really huge, then you will say that, okay, I want to increase n, okay? Because apparently these expected values are very close to each other. So this attack would not work. For instance, if you choose n equals to six, uh, this value is 2 and this is 1 here. So it is very hard to distinguish. But if you increase n, so let's say that increase n, so this is what would happen to the graph. Okay, let me try to plot it in a bigger way. Okay, so for the uh, biased dice, sorry, for the fair dice, the picture would be something like this. And this is n. Again, for the uh, bias dice, the picture would be something like this. Okay. So as you can see, now if you take the threshold here, the probabilities will be really small. Again, if you increase the n, the peaks probably will go higher, but the gap between them will be increased and these small probabilities will be very close to zero. 
So that is the idea. So maybe if you are not familiar with binomial distribution, if p will be were uh, 1 over 2, the picture will be something symmetric, something like this. I don't know if I can plot it, but yes. So assume that this is n, the expected value will be n over 2 when p equals to 2. Okay. So again, this is probability. This is the number of experiments. So this the probability of observing this many successes. Sorry, when p is 1 over 2. Sorry. You know, for a, when you are uh, tossing a coin, this is the case. And p equals to 1 over 2. Q is also 1 over 2. And the picture becomes symmetric. So there is a right and left part half here becomes the same. But in our case, p is uh, smaller, so this is why the picture is kind of moved to the left. And in cryptanalysis, this p value will be really small, like 1 over 2 to the 30 or something. So the picture will be, you know, shifted a lot to the left. Okay. So this is the main idea. So this is the reason we are increasing n. But aim is to find an optimal M. So if this uh, non-detection probability and false alarm probability is very close to zero, then you will say that, okay, this N is enough. So you can calculate for many N values and choose the uh, best one for you.